How is everyone on this rainy, drizzly day? It's fall. It's fall. If you all would like to join in me in singing the Breakthrough Prayer, it's on the back of your little bulletin. Come, Holy Spirit, come show us how we can be the spiritual heart of this community. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God of justice, you know no favorites and show no partiality. But you have given us assurance that the prayers of the lowly pierce the clouds. Their petitions reach the heavens. Look upon us who come before you and grant that we may open ourselves with confidence in your mercy and be justified by your grace. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we are going to have our offering. So today we're going to gather for our offering prayer with our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness to God. Um, if you all will pray with me and pray with your, your concerns as I read this. We come today to give you thanks for the work that you do, dear Lord. We come with celebrations and joys, and we come with hearts full of concerns and worry. Give us, Lord, the opportunity to celebrate and be joyous, and to always remember these good things come from you and, and who you have been to us and in us. Let us also remember that, that we bring our prayers to you and our worries and our anxieties and our fears and concerns. We know that you hear our prayers, that you know our pain, and that you are already at work. As we listen for new opportunities for us to be us by your hands and feet in this world, help us to be the light that shines on the dark paths. And through us, let others come to find you because they have seen you through us. All this we lift up in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we commit all of this to you through the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 19, verses 13 through 15. Please stand as you are able. Some people brought children to Jesus so that he would place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples scolded them. Allow the children to come to me, Jesus said. Don't forbid them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to people like these children. Then he blessed the children and went away from there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now, so, hi guys, you know me, I'm Jamie. <laughs> Um, I actually started working with the Children's Division in April, um, and this is one of our supervisors, Jenny Minnis. She's going to give you a little information about what we do there and the things that you guys might be able to help us with. So I'm not used to a mic, so bear with me. Usually my voice just carries. So um, I first off want to thank the congregation for having us here today. I love these opportunities to come and speak um, to let you know the community at the heart know um, what the needs are. Um, from our perspective, working with Children's Division, we see um, a lot of firsthand needs within our community, and so I love these opportunities where we can come and talk, and um, I love input. So, um, with that being said, I do have my go-go juice here this morning. Um, need a little coffee to get going this dreary day. So, anyone who knows me knows I live off of coffee. Um, so, once again, I appreciate the time to allow me and Jamie to come. We are so lucky to have Jamie um, as part of our team. She comes with first-hand knowledge of foster parenting, um, which helps us, um, even as work those 10 years with Children's Division. Um, I'm humbled by um, Jamie and the knowledge that she's brought of working with foster parents. I've worked with foster parents for years, but I've never been a foster parent myself, and so she can share with me those struggles that our foster parents go through, um, and it's opened our eyes um, to the community of needs. And so, um, not to be too numbers, but I, I do like my numbers. Um, we have in our community, I always try to 
Um, let me know, because sometimes we, as a community, I grew up um, not too far from here, Hale, Missouri, um, is where I'm from. Was a member of our Methodist church there. Um, since I was a little kid, I was staring. I love the children's message. Um, that spoke to my heart. I love that um, your congregation does that. Um, I think it's so special to have the children come up um, and have a moment and a message shared. Um, it spoke to my heart dearly to have that. And I remember as a kid um, coming to church and my family didn't come with me. Oftentimes I rode, rode the church bus. We had a church bus that came around town and picked us up. Um, and I would come to church and um, that was just a special moment. And so um, having this opportunity here, a lot of times as communities, when we have our small communities, we know our people within our community, we know their struggles. But sometimes we don't know um, on a wider scope, maybe of a county, um, or the area surrounding us of everybody and their struggles of what's facing us. And so um, today's message is more, um, a little bit eye opening um, to share with that there are struggles in our community. Um, there are individuals in our community that struggle every single day to make it through the day. Um, children that um, are needing love, support, and nurturing. Um, Children's Division's first message is that we want children to be with their family. We want to support that family unit, um, but there's sometimes that parents have things they need to work on before they can be ready um, to be that family unit again. And in those situations, we have um, children in alternative care through the court system that are needing a temporary home. And so just to give, like I said, I'm not going to do tons of numbers to you guys, but to I waken, um, we are part of a third circuit. So the judicial circuit, we cover Sullivan County, um, Sheraton County, and Lynn County. And of those three counties, we look at about, on average, 130 kids in foster care. Um, and so that's where, like I said, that number shocks a lot of people in our community um, because we, we don't see that larger, larger scope. And, um, sharing because I am in Lynn County, um, and we've ordered Sheraton County, um, a lot of those numbers are Lynn County. Um, probably half are Lynn County children that are in protective custody. So um, this is an issue um, for our home, um, for the families in our community. And we have a need for foster homes in our area. Um, even that networking support. Um, I don't come here today to say foster homes um, is the only thing we need. I also like to pass the message of, you know, when you see someone struggling or if someone is going through a situation, um, offer them hope and support. Um, I always say a warm meal. Um, if someone's going through something and, um, you know, you've heard of the struggles that they are going through, to open up and just have a warm meal for them. They are usually stressed and going through things and needing just comfort and support during that time. So reach out that hand. Um, for our foster homes, we brought those shows in the back, um, but we do look for foster homes in our community. We, in the past even two years, have significantly lost the number of foster homes just to the struggles um, that it's been, um, that everyone has faced. There's a more of a struggle to support our own families, um, and for those who have the hearts and the kindness to open their homes to foster children, it's become a struggle for them to maintain that. So um, we do ask that um, anyone is interested, if we have a desperate need definitely for those teenagers. Um, I know teenagers can be a struggle, a lot of um, individuals, you know, the babies and the little ones, um, but the teenagers are struggling too and they struggle in the hardest of ways um, and they show that um, they show that need for love and support differently. Um, and sometimes that comes out in anger or frustration. Um, and so having that extra patience with them. Um, oftentimes we speak about the teenagers that are, um, they follow the actions that they know. And so if someone that they love and care about is struggling with substance abuse, or they're struggling um, with their own anger issues, They've learned and they follow that practice. And so if we can um, be one step as a community to break a cycle um, and to have even mentors for those youth to look up to um, and to know that there is a different way of life 
to um, prosper and grow and have a healthy life. Um, we want to be those opportunities. And um, so, like I said, sometimes the coffee is good, sometimes the coffee leaves my train of thought to go other places. Um, Jamie chuckles, I'm usually very high energy. And so, um, what I want to talk about a little bit too, um, like I said, is um, all needs of all children in the community. Um, a lot of congregations come up to us and ask, you know, how can we help donate? Um, we don't have the space or the location to donate, so we usually ask anybody to donate to send about 40 of those resources that are already established in our communities to help and support. Um, we have preventative services. Um, one of the areas that program units I'm over is uh, family-centered services. That's where we try to link in uh, to help families and for the children to maintain the family unit um, and create intervention before it gets to a point that children have to come in to protective custody. And that's a passion I've had for years um, to be able to do that early intervention when possible. Um, in those cases, um, we do have donations where we take um, cleaning supplies and things like that um, to help families because sometimes it really is just making um, ends meet. Um, sometimes those um, necessities that we have in our homes so ample to have just even um, Polox wipes. So <laughs> we've all faced those struggles this last year realizing not everything was readily available, but some families just don't have the funding um, and the support to be able to um, have those needs. So um, we do take um, some donations for that and to work with families. Um, but my biggest message is just to be a support and a care for those in your community that um, there are issues of substance abuse and um, issues of domestic violence. Um, last year, I spoke a lot during COVID about the numbers of domestic violence in our community and how our community was so isolated. Um, and that speaks for domestic violence, adults who suffer from a spouse that um, they very often was trapped in a home with their abuser, isolated from the community, but that spoke the same for the children. Um, Children, when schools shut down, we saw a dramatic um, decrease in numbers of hotlines um, that we responded to. That wasn't because all of a sudden everybody was living happily and children were not being abused in their homes. Um, oftentimes, it was just that they were isolated. They wasn't near teachers or caregivers that saw them every day um, to touch base with them and know how they were doing. Um, a lot of them function by being in a computer screen um, and sometimes not even that. And so um, we passed a message last year about reaching out to your neighbors. Um, I think a large message, and it has gotten so much better, even in the 10 years I've been with Children's Division, about it was such a taboo subject to talk about child abuse um, for many, many years. I'm sure um, many of you can think when you were children yourself that um, it wasn't anything anyone talked about. It was something seen as that was their family uh, matter to do, be dealt with in their home, and no one spoke about it. Um, the culture has changed, and I'm so thankful the culture has changed that it is something that if you see something, people are speaking up. They all go into a trusted adult. Children are told to go to a trusted adult. A trusted adults are in our communities, and they're taking action. And that's wonderful, but there's still work to be done on that. Um, definitely in our small communities. Um, you know, I always encourage that if anyone does have concerns or you're seeing something that just maybe is different than the normal for someone you know and you care about, to reach out, to reach out to them um, or to reach out to a trusted member. You can reach out to Children's Division as well. Um, and it's not, I want to take away the culture uh, that if someone reported a concern, that's a bad thing, because it's not. It shows someone cares and loves and supports that individual enough to make sure that they have the needs um, for their family. And that's what we are trying to do. We're trying to be that support for our community, um, to be a voice out there for the children who maybe don't have a voice. 
Um, so as well as those shows back there for foster care and teen, I also included the Child Abuse and Neglect Hotline as a business card. Um, my personal business card is back there as well. Um, says Jennifer, everybody knows me as Jenna Jenny. Um, very informal, but the state still makes me be formal on business cards. Um, confuses everybody because some people don't know I have all three names. So, um, but I guess that's my message today is I don't want to, I can be up here for hours, shame to tell you, I can talk, I like the sound of my own voice. Uh, so, um, but I'll keep it short and sweet uh, today. And my message is uh, for our community that there are struggles within the community and we don't all see it. And I do not see everything. I know that. I know there's a lot in our communities that we are not aware of that is going on. And I know there are families that could use our help. And I would help every family um, I could in the community as well as my whole team that we have. And we have a growing team. I'm so proud that we have a growing team because that's more individuals with pure and good hearts that are reaching out. Um, it's not the pay. I'll tell you that much. It's not the pay. It is the love and their passion for their own communities um, that bring people like Jamie um, to our family. And so um, I want to encourage that um, as a community that we all reach out to our neighbors, that we reach out to those that might be struggling, um, offer support and love. And please, if you do have concerns, please reach out to Children's Division. We are there to be a helping agency. As I said, I speak about foster parenting, um, and to me, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I say, I worked 10 years with Children's Division, and I think it's a hard job, but I think the harder job is being a foster parent sometimes. <laughs> I tell Jamie, I don't know how she did it, but I also know Jamie's heart. Right now, um, they have a rule out there with Children's Division that they can't take um, children less for adoption, and um, I'm going to share with her. That's been a struggle. I hope you don't mind me sharing. That's been a struggle. I often threaten to quit daily. Um, to go to back take, to foster. To take children in, so Jenny knows. So yeah, <laughs> if anybody's willing or able to even do respite care, sometimes we have parents, you know foster parents just need a weekend off or a week vacation in the summer, or you know to celebrate something special with their family that's out of town. Um, I know we've had foster parents that had deaths in the family and it was a struggle to find uh, someone to take in six kids. You know, you, even to place them clear across the state while they're still in school was hard for us. So anybody that's willing to do respite care, anybody that's willing to do, like I said, if anybody's willing to deal with teenagers that are sometimes very difficult, but very loving, I mean, it's hard sometimes, but. They're, they're sharing them equal up just in difficult ways. And that's what we try to get that message across um, to the community because um, teenagers all all struggle sometimes, but they they've grown and seen so much for their little hearts, um, and that comes out in different ways. Um, I know Jamie's one; she'll spend hours. I think it was the first month that she worked with us. She spent hours just making phone calls, trying to get kids placed. Um, one of all, um, and I'm probably a hard head is the one about it. Um, but we love uh, to keep children siblings groups together. I have a big brother. He was my protector and I cannot imagine if we were sent to foster care being without my big brother. I think that would be harder than even leaving my parents if I was to share that. Um, leave, having my big brother who was my protector separated from me would have broke my heart. And we have children who face that sometimes and we try hard not to. Um, that's, to me, I think we all share that it feels like a failure when we have to separate the siblings and we don't want to. And we had, it touches deeply to our hearts because we had this happen this last week that we had a sibling group, a large sibling group that came in at four um, and we wasn't able to keep them all together. And that's a struggle because we have homes in our communities um, that are, were opening up their homes, but they just didn't have space. Um, and so we was even uh, talking, I said, I shared that in my years, we had two neighbors who became foster parents at the same time. And they kind of said, we'll do it together and we'll be a support for each other. Um, kind of like a pack together. They said, we're going to do this together. We're going to be a support and we'll help each other out. And the first family I gave them was five children um, that was removed. Um, 
horrible circumstances, horrible, horrible circumstances. Uh, but we uh, did have to split three and two as a sibling uh, group into different homes. But I'm telling you, they had evenings together. You wouldn't know they was in two separate houses because they functioned as a family together. They attended church together. They had dinners together. They did everything in the community together that those siblings always had their bond. And ultimately, those children were able to be adopted. Um, and so um, that that's a touchy story that sometimes it helps even as a group to come together. I do share, I spent most of my career in the Third Circuit, Putnam County and Grundy County. Um, and in Grundy County, um, I did speaking at churches just like this as we do today still. Um, and we had a church that took action. They said, we heal. Um, we heal through your voice or calling to make a difference. And um, still to this day, we call Trenton a lot because that church took action. And there was, I don't even know how, I mean, throughout the years, there was different foster families through that church, but they have created uh, a network of foster parents. And they've all kind of went in together as a support um, and said, we heal the need in our community. And they originally just took kids from Grundy County area. And now um, they reached out and they've widened that curtain to, you know, sometimes it is keeping kids in the surrounding areas too, to offer support. Um, so the kids can have visits with their parents. Um, and some of the struggles that we face, if Lord forbid we do have to separate siblings, um, but if that happens, if we can keep them in the same community where they're able to still have touch with each other, instead of being hours away from each other, where they're just having phone calls or video chats, um, that's, that's such a struggle. Um, visits with parents, our first goal is to do reunification. Um, we want to work with parents so that the kids can come back to the home as quickly as, and safely as possible. But that includes having visits with their parents. And so if we can keep our kids in our communities, then that also allows them to have more time to be able to work, you know, and see their parents while their parents are working through things. Um, so, like I said, um, we lost like our sibling group. We separated. Um, they live now two hours apart, mm -hmm. and two, I think two hours, roughly hour and a half, yeah. two hours from their family, from their parents, and the community they were being raised in. So, if we can find anybody, um, we do kinship placements also. So, if you know, there's somebody that's willing to maybe be a kinship placement. It's different licensing requirements, and it makes it a little bit easier for you. Because sometimes we can bring in kids from our community that, you know, we place kids in our community far away because we don't have homes for teenagers. And if somebody in our community who's like, oh yeah, I know them because they went to school with my kids, or I know their parents, or I know them, we can easily place a child with you because we can it's a less justify of a that as a, as a kinship. It kind of speeds up, expedites the licensing process. Yeah. It doesn't stop any requirements. Um, so we still make sure they're safe homes for the kids, but it expedites that process. Instead of going through the licensing and the training first, we can have the kids go to the home as the foster parents are doing the training to be foster parents. Um, and so we do oftentimes reach out um, because I always say families are going through the hardest times of their lives when we're getting involved. Um, and definitely a situation where children have to be removed. That is the hardest time in their life. And so turning to them and saying, you know, Jamie, who's someone you know yeah. um, that we could have your kids stay with the, the faster. You know, the thought of, well, I have a church member or somebody who I know um, that can have, you know, take the kids. Sometimes they just, they're blank. They're blank. So if the community reaches out to us, that helps as well. And we can maintain kids um, in the family unit. Um, that's waiting for an opportunity. Um, like I said, I encourage anybody who, if this message is speaking to you today, um, me and Jamie will be here afterwards. I'm going to tell you to stay late. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll be here afterwards for you to talk to. Um, if you want to talk more about fostering, um, Jamie has supposed to have knowledge. She knows far more than even I do because you live it. Um, well, when you guys did, were such a great support for us. So. She did. She stayed in. You guys know. Um, you've seen it, so you guys know. Jamie actually came to me. Um, she had heard that we go and speak at churches sometimes, and she said, 
unlike an opportunity if you guys would come to my church um, and speak with me, I said, I'd love to. You can come too. <laughs> you can help me. Um, but she said, I remember coming in and she goes, I had several kids, several kids just placed with me. She goes, we got up to church on Sunday morning. We went to church and she goes, my congregation was a support to me. You even talked about meals brought yep. to you that uh, she's like, meals brought, everybody stepped in. She goes, it's chaotic when kids were being placed. Uh, we had so much going on, 50 directions. You said you felt like you needed like 10 of you um, to get through the day. And she goes, that's my congregation, was um, a support and backing to me. Um, and so that moved me, that, that she speaks directly um, of your family here, um, that you were a support to her. She said, sometimes I wondered what they thought when I walked in with six kids following behind me, but they just accepted us all. Um, and so, I mean, that moves, those moments move me because that is a family. Um, that is a family um, come together to support. Um, and that's why I hope to see, even if um, you don't have the capabilities yourself to maybe um, open your home to foster, um, if you can be a support to someone who is willing to be, so that way it's not so scary to begin with. And like I said, Jamie's hard said it still. She, every single day she says, I know these kids need homes. I I wish I could take them home with me. Um, she she really would take them all. I think if she had an opportunity to to Jason support. Jason won't let me bring all of them home either. So <laughs> you, you know he's on two fronts, so he won't let me bring everybody. Home, so. But she's seen the need. I think even more so since coming and joining us. Um, how kids all have to travel so far away, and not to hammer home, but I do get on my soapboxes. Um, those teenagers, um, if anybody who's raised teenagers, how much are their peer supports and um, their friends, um, their school, their sports team that they're part of, um, is part of their whole life. I mean, that's sometimes the only escape that they've had from what's been happening at home is their peer supports and their friends and the sports, um, their tennis team or anything that they're a part of, how much is that so much part of their lives that has got them through day to day? And then they're now removed from the home because it was, you know, someone had got to this unsafe and we was wanting to help their family, but now we've just taken them away from that peer support, that favorite teacher they had in school, that tennis team um, that they got to go on Saturdays with, or, you know, go and um, get a break from everything. Now they've had to leave that and go hours away sometimes. And we wonder why teens struggle. Um, definitely teens in foster care, why they have such a hard time of it. And that is because, you know, they want, they crave for to maintain in that family unit. We see a lot of kids um, and recently made the news or some articles uh, on the whole everybody reads the news, but I do, um, but that we do have a lot of kids that run away, teenagers that run away, and that breaks my heart and scares me um, for kids in our community because they're running home. It's who they're running to. They're running home to their community because that's every core of their body's time and that's where they need to be. And so we want to help support that, um, support that where they can be in their community. And so you guys are the key to that. It's not all on your shoulders, but um, the community is the key to that. And so once again, yeah, leave a message from me. If anybody has questions um, or wants to have an opportunity to talk, I won't take the whole, but I love to talk. Um, I won't take the whole morning away from everybody, but I will stay late and as late as it takes to answer any questions I can and be a support. Um, if anybody wants to talk afterwards. Any last message? I think that's it. So yeah, we'll see you back there if you guys would like to speak with us. So thank you for your time. Thank you.